Okay, so let me talk about another extension. This is going to be the NetLogo level space extension, right? So I'm going to start by um, showing you the most simplest possible version of level space. So I'm going to go into the models library and it, under code examples, if you scroll down under extension examples, there's LS, which stands for level space. Then we're going to load up the parent model example. Okay, so I'm going to open that one up. Okay, now as soon as we did that, by the way, you'll notice that level space shows up. And this is because in the code it actually draws in the LS level space. So what is level space? Well, level space is an extension that allows one NetLogo model to call other NetLogo models, right? In the example we're about to show, we have a parent model that's going to create a bunch of child models and then set those child models up to run separately from the parent model, right? So as you can see, if I blow this up a little bit, right? Um, here we have the calling extension, and then we have LS reset. LS reset is actually going to destroy all the child models, right? Um, and then it's going to clear the parent model, right? And then the code that actually calls the child models is actually kind of contained in this button. So you'll see it says create a child model the file, and the file is equal to user file. And user file is a special net logo command that allows the user to choose a, a file, right? So we're going to create a child model. When we hit that, we get up a little box that allows us to look through the files and we can pull up um, the models library models, right? Um, and it defaults, by the way, to sticking you in the LS extension folder, right? And we could go down to sample models, biology, and let's bring up a couple. So we're gonna bring up flocking, which we've seen before, right? And there it is. And now we have this NetLogo file, uh, NetLogo model, that's kind of a reduced form of what we see before of the of the flocking model, right? And then we can pull up another one. So we can pull up, let's say, ants. ants. Right? And so now we have a second model, right? And so now we have these kind of like these three models, the parent model, right? Which is the one that's calling these models and then the ants and the flocking models, right? Um, and let's, let's make the parent model a little smaller so you can see the other two when I do this. Okay, so now we're not going to set up again because setup would destroy all of our models. That would destroy the level space, right? Instead, we're going to hit setup models. And what that actually does, if you look at it, um, is call the command setup models. And the command setup models actually does ls, ls ask, ls models, which is all the models that have been created setup so it's going to issue the command setup to all the models and so you can see they've all been set up now and now we can run all those models from the main model by hitting go now it's going to run a lot slower because we have all these different models now interacting right um, and so this is kind of a cool way that you can have these models interact in interesting ways but this example doesn't really do anything in terms of interaction it just spins the models up and lets them run so to really look at kind of the way you might interact, have these models interact, um, we're going to go and look at the um, the other one of the other examples. So here we're going to go and we're going to discard our changes to this model, and we're going to pull up the model um, visualizer and plotter example. I, I like this example, right? So this model is also a level space model. But as opposed to the other level space model that pulled up these graphical ones, it's actually going to run the submodels, what we call headless, that there is no graphical interface. So what does it actually do? Well, um, the main piece of code that's probably the most interesting is it's going to create a turtle equal to whatever the number of turtles is. In this case, it's 26, right? And each of those turtles is going to create a model that's not interactive, it doesn't have that dash interactive, so it's going to be a headless model. One model of the woof sheet predation model, right? And then it's going to identify the, the model IDs and some other things along those lines. But the most important part is it's then going to um, plot what the count of wolves and the count of sheep for that particular model is by moving the turtle to that location on, on the screen, right? So let me, let me blow this up a little bit. All right, okay. So when we hit go, now what's happening is that 
the parent model, this model, is running all 26 sub-models simultaneously, and the locations of these turtles are equal to the counts of the wolves and the sheep in, in, those, in their respective models, right? And so it kind of gives you an idea of, as you run these models over time, how stable are they, how close are they to one particular value, right? And of course, this is still only a one-way communication, right? We're telling the models to run and they're telling us what their values are. You can imagine level space getting very complex with so having models built on top of models, built on top of models, they're all calling and trading information with each other on a, on a fairly regular basis, right? Um, and um, this, is, this is one quick intro to how you might start to think about that. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, level space is brand new, so I encourage you uh, to kind of play around with it and check it out uh, and let me know if you have any questions. Take care.